So I've got my custom fiberglass cafe racer seat all configured and finished. Time for the upholstery. And now I've got to strip this down and prep the frame for painting. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So we got to get this seat taken off. I've got four wing nuts down here and four bolts that are coming through if you've seen the previous episodes. Four bolts coming through this upholstery pan that are holding everything down and I want to show you <laughs> trotting them all everywhere. I just want to show you what I've got in here uh, holding it up off of the frame. So up in the back I have um, two rubber stoppers that I've cut to size and the same thing up here. There we go. It's a little snug, but we'll get that all sorted out over time. They're a little clumsy, but uh, they do the trick. Hmm. My threads are a little bunged up there. Okay, that's our seat pan. I was going to send this off to Rodney, but I may hold off until the uh, tropical storm, I guess it's going to be a category four, is heading toward North Carolina right now. And uh, so he's, we're just texting and he's having to load up his three motorcycles and put them someplace uh, on high ground. And then they're going to load up their van with uh, a bunch of stuff that they think is the most expensive or uh, precious and I don't know wait the storm out so this particular piece has a little drama around it hopefully uh, everything will be fine with Rodney and uh, we'll wish him the best here and maybe I gotta have him come out to California for a couple of days but we'll see we're playing it by ear um, let me get the tank off of here So back to our frame. We have to take the wire harness off, now that I've cleaned it up a bunch, and prep all of this for priming, which means I gotta get all the dust off. I have to look for any remaining bits of rust, and there may be some small spots. In particular, back here, there we got a little rust yet so I gotta get after that um, I may use some of that Permatex rust treatment and then uh, wash this whole thing down probably with my ketone or you could use acetone and we will prime it so to get some of that uh, rust off I'm gonna take it outside we'll get the sandblaster on it Then I finally got smart enough to realize I should do this on the lawn. The sand just goes into the grass. Who cares? Oh, I gotta put some eye protection on. Oh, that I do care about.
we're going to get it cleaned up. So we got the major rust off, which was really down low on this left hand side of the frame. Okay. And uh, now I just got to get the wire wheel out on the Dremel and do some of the really tiny stuff, nooks and crannies, and then get it cleaned up and prepped for primer. Well, uh, prepped for sanding. We got to rough up all the paint and then, uh, then we can prime it. Also, I have a bit of welding to do on this electric straight first. Now, there's just a few little spots I want to get back, and uh, I'm just going to hit with a wire wheel on my Dremel rotary tool. I might use my hand drill, uh, you know, it depends if I have space for the, the tool or not. It's getting to be just a attention to the little details at this point. Pretty boring stage of things. Um, you know, sandblasting is kind of fun because you don't sandblast a lot. Um, but now it's just get every little nook and cranny and there's a surprising amount of surface area on a frame like this. Okay, I've been at this for at least an hour and my tool is not so happy anymore. This thing, <laughs> many hours on one of these cheap rotary tools and you'll, I'm near the end of it, let's put it that way. Um, but it's still spinning so I'm still using it and it's gotten quite hot. Um, again, there is a lot of surface area on a frame like this and this is one of those jobs that you just have to have a tremendous amount of patience with and know that if you take your frame off to a powder coater they're doing this for you and so but you're paying for it and this is where you're saving yourself a lot of money um, so on a budget project my advice would be to just accept the fact that you're going to be doing a lot of tedious work instead of paying other people to do it um, that's one of the ways you get by on a budget. But it's important to remember how calming and just what a good kind of mental, spiritual exercise it is to do some maybe monotonous task for a long period of time and just kind of be one with uh, yourself. The key is not to let your brain uh, dwell on something stupid the whole time you're doing it. Uh, and just kind of enjoy what it is. I've said this before, uh, it was a Zen master, can't remember who, said uh, when you're stirring the soup, stir the soup, which I'm not doing right now, I'm interrupting my surp, uh, soup stirring to uh, talk to you guys on this video, but uh, I'm gonna go back to stirring the soup. here is just take it in sections because you'll lose track of where you've been so I first started down here and I spent a lot of time there then I worked on this side and now I've worked myself up here uh, and then in my mind I'm also paying particular attention to those areas that will be visible once um, you know the tank and the seat are on some of that stuff gets covered up and is a little less critical but remember if you leave rust then you're going to see rust again. So, just some thoughts. And what I'm trying to accomplish with the wire wheel is to remove as much of the rust before I go around with the uh, rust converter, uh, as a, get rid of the rust as much as you can mechanically uh, because the rust converter as you've seen in previous videos of mine where I've used it uh, leaves kind of a layer of paint. I, I've always likened it to uh, like a cheap acrylic house paint um, but clear, you know, while well, it's kind of purple color and uh, you got to get that off. So I want to use as little of that stuff as possible. There are some nooks and crannies where you just can't get in there with even a tool like this. 
Uh, and that's where I'm going to stick a small brush with that Permatex rust converter in there. And, uh, you know, hopefully at least I can convert it even if I can't get paint in there. Here's another little spot where I can't quite get the tool in there. So that's where I'm going to end up putting some of that rust converter down in those gaps. Here's that Permatex stuff and like how intricate and delicate am I getting with this stuff? Well again, I don't want it all over the place because then I have to go through the trouble of removing it. So I'm going to get this intricate, like literally put it exactly where I want it and nowhere else. And that rust converter ends up giving it a little bit of a purple hue wherever, wherever that converted some rust. So another thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting on the rust converter to do its thing and dry, I'm going to clean out the races for the, the steering um, stem here. Uh, I just pulled all of the bearings out of this thing and took the triple tree off and left it and so it's full of grease and uh, I want to tape this off of course when I paint so it, it just I'm going to clean it up. And since I don't want, you know, like kerosene or parts cleaner dripping down all over everything and then I just have to clean that up before I paint. I'm, I just put a little parts cleaner and degreaser in a uh, little cup here. I'm going to try to be pretty targeted about how I do this. But that cuts that grease right away. Loosens it right up. Let's get a towel. A lot of guys will put a tapered bearing set in here. I'm not going to say that that's necessary here in my case. And uh, again, a budget project. So I've got all 18 of the bearings that go top and bottom. That's 36 total. And um, I'm just going to reuse them. I don't need to spend money where I don't need to spend money. They look good. You know, if I put it all together and it's loose and I keep tightening it up and I'm feeling like a notchiness in it, well then, yeah, we'll put new bearings in. But I wasn't before and I was riding this bike, so I don't know what would have changed. Yeah. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the rust converter to dry and I've cleaned up that bearing, um, I want to get all the dust and the sand and everything off of this frame in preparation for uh, painting and I want to rough up the surface of the paint that's going to stay on. Um, I'm of the camp that you leave paint that is stuck well and prime over it uh, rather than remove absolutely everything. Um, but try your best to remove that paint before you leave it. So this frame, I'm going to run some sandpaper over everything, maybe like uh, 300 or something, and just rough it all up. And if I see that the paint's coming off in some spots, well then I'll focus on that to make sure I remove any loose paint. And for getting around the round tubing like this, I just cut out some strips of 320, and this is wet dry, but uh, I'm just going to rough up this paint everywhere. So I'm thinking about as I go around the tube, you know, doing a full 90 degree turn each time. And again, this is going to take a while.
Okay, so I am going to uh, clean all of the dust off of this thing now that I have sanded. And for that, um, I don't want to put water on all of this exposed metal, so I'm going to use ketone. I think you could use, oh, probably, uh, I don't think paint thinner or paint solvent would be a good idea, but um, you might use acetone and uh, perhaps denatured alcohol, but something that is going to dry, dry. And because this is extremely flammable, I'm outside uh, for two reasons. One, fume buildup uh, in an enclosed space. When you have this much surface area, you can get enough fumes to where it becomes an explosive situation. So I'm outside. And then two, uh, I'm gonna try using this respirator this stuff is just nasty for your health and I don't want to breathe the fumes so much. So I'm going to wear uh, gloves and a microfiber towel and my ketone or you could use acetone, something like that. And for the nooks and crannies, I'm just using carb cleaner because this dries really uh, completely dry. Don't forget to turn it upside down. There's a lot going on under here, here that you won't see otherwise. So before I get uh, the primer out, now that I've got the frame all clean and the surface roughed up, uh, I want to make sure I finish up, I just have tack welds on this electrics tray, so I want to put a few more welds around this thing, I'm not going to like run a whole bead around the entire thing, but just a few more, and then I also want to consider some of the holes I'm going to drill. Uh, I don't quite know where all of them are going to go at this time, but I have a, an idea for some. And I may as well drill those holes now uh, for the wires that are going to run to the brake light and uh, what's going to go through the tray because then those holes will get some primer on the inside of them and, and paint of course eventually. Uh, but uh, you know I can, I can do some of that after the fact too. Little tack welds all the way around should be sufficient. Back here, I ended up because I had, you know, folds of metal that were over each other. I ended up turning the heat up again back here uh, because then the metal on the sheet, the sheet metal, was double thick in those spots, and it could handle the uh, the extra amperage. So let me just clean that up a little bit and drill a couple of holes for some wires and we'll start thinking about primer. So one more thing I want to consider before I prime 
is back here for the brake light. I'm going with one of these LED strips and yes they have an adhesive back here but um, I see a 3M uh, logo on the back of this adhesive. That gives me a lot of confidence. Uh, that said, what about the paint that it's sticking to? You know there's a lot of things that could have these ends, a lot of vibration here. I just, I feel like the ends of this thing are eventually going to lift up and off and you know and it'll be looking kind of shoddy so I was thinking and I'm going to just go ahead and do this here on the ends the lights end here I've still got a half inch uh, you know a good centimeter on each side that I could weld a tab that would bend up over these and be painted and I could just bend that over and, and just a little something more beyond the adhesive to hold it in place and uh, before I paint I want to weld those on now. I'm just thinking I can do them out of a little bit of sheet metal here this will bend easily enough and uh, so I'll just cut a strip here and then make two tabs weld it on the bottom and they can be folded up over. Straight edges come in many forms Straight. Okay, so a little piece of metal has to go around this thing plus a little to tack on to. So maybe that much. It's got to go all the way around to here and I'll mark that. To that length. And one way to get this the exact length is to bend it right on that line. There we go. That should be close here. I'll put it in the vise. There. Now I got two pieces the same length. Oops. Crummy shears. Like they're loosening up. Okay, I'm just thinking of a creative way to cut this off. And let's round it off a little bit even. Nice, I think I'll round the other side some. So I just made these markings on here for the bends and I think I can bend both at the same time.
All right. They're on and they're bendable. I just got to clean them up now. And then once this is mounted in there, I'm going to have a wire going right in there for the uh, the wire to the lights. Where is my marker? Much right here. All right, got it started. can fish a wire in there. I don't want to go fishing too deep for these so and I also don't want to go so far back that I hit that plug that I put in here because that was very hard stainless steel if you recall. So I should be able to fish that wire at least to this far. I may make this hole a little bigger though, just to be able to get a hook in there and grab it. There. Well, hey you guys, sorry another wardrobe change. Ran out of weekend, uh, but we're making some great progress. As usual, Cafe Racer's moving forward. I think in the next episode, we're gonna see some primer go down on this now cleaned and prepped um, frame and we've got our holes drilled we've got uh, the little brackets welded on and if you like what I'm doing please subscribe and click that like button and uh, give it a thumbs up and I will see you next week uh, will I yeah I'm gonna work more on this next weekend so thanks for watching mm -hmm.